While we're talking about remote control, one of the obvious uses for remote control is a music player. And I just happen to have a really cheap MP3 player module that I really like. It's the BY8301 MP3 player. And this tiny little gadget, when you plug it into USB, appears as an external drive. You drag your MP3 files to it, and then it'll allow you to play with them. And it only uses a few pins because it uses the SPI protocol to communicate. Even better for people who are into things like cosplay or who just don't want to use a microcontroller, you can actually play back the MP3s by connecting pins. But that only restricts you to a few files. When you use SPI and a microcontroller, you can use as many files as will fit on the drive. And the way it works is each music file or each audio file that you want to play have to be numbered. And so you choose the number of the file you want to play. For this project, I'm using the infrared remote again, and I've pressed each button in turn to get the hex code of each of the numbers on my remote. Plus I'm using the stop button so I can play a numbered file. And then when I'm sick of hearing it, I can press stop and I can play another one. And out in the serial monitor here, I'll show what it's doing. And if an unknown signal is received, again, we output the hex code so that we can detect it next time round. And it plays pretty nicely. I'm playing it through a hacked speaker, which I extracted from a broken set of headphones. So let's look at the code. This is the library I'm using, and because all the documentation is really sparse and incorrect a lot of the time, this guy has done us a real service by creating this library. And it allows you to tell if the device is busy, to play a file, to set the volume, but the volume doesn't set while something is playing, it only affects the next time you play allows you to, to stop and is even provided the Chinese documentation and the wiring diagram. So as you can see, the microcontroller provides power and ground and RX and TX pins, but not the hardware RX and TX serial pins. It uses software serial. So it expects them to be on 10 and 11. And then we've got the busy pin that we pay attention to, the speaker out, so I've just soldered those and taped them onto my headphone, power in, ground, and then each of these you can trigger a sound, or as we said, you can use SPI. So I'm using A0 for my busy pin. I'm loading the libraries. So as I said, it's using software serial rather than the hardware serial. We create the object, the my player object. This is the remote again. I've got my remote pointing to a infrared receiver on A2. This is where the results are put. And then, so I've got a visual indication that we've sent a signal. I've got a LED on pin 13. We set up the pin for the LED as output. We start serial. We let us know that we started the IR. We start the IR. And then we let us know that it's worked. And then we initialize the MP3 player using the busy pin as the argument to the function. Each time we loop round, we look to see if we've received an infrared result. And if we have, we decode it. And we do the switch statement again. So we check in for various values we didn't want to do if then else. 
So the first is the remote button one, and if we get a one, we play the first track. Same all the way through until we get to stop. And stop is a special hex code where we use the function stop play, so it stops whatever it's doing. If it's not any of those, then we output that we're going to decode it. We set the LED to high because we've received a signal and we tell it to look for the next value. Otherwise, we just turn the LED off and we go around the loop again with a small delay. The play function accepts a track number as an integer. It checks to see if it's already busy. If it's not already busy because it's got that that exclamation mark meaning not then it does a small delay starts the track playing and I'm doing it at full volume just to see how loud it can get and it can get quite loud even with my headphone speaker and then a small delay again and we output which track it's playing if it was already playing then we output oops a track was already playing this decode function is basically what we had before so that we can see what brand and how many bits are being sent and we output those to the serial monitor.